Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about the best way to sharpen a photo or photograph in Photoshop. Now most of us with half decent cameras shoot in RAW. This video is not going to be about JPEGs out of camera because JPEGs have been sharpened in the camera. So unless you can turn that facility off, do not sharpen a JPEG. So we're talking RAW, TIFF, PSD, whatever. So when you bring a RAW file in, it's slightly soft. And what happens is Adobe Camera Raw applies some sharpening. You can change that by going to develop, set default settings and override it. But you need some default sharpening. You can't just not sharpen a RAW file. So I go for my normal workflow, do everything, do my final sharpening, crop to the aspect ratio of the final size I want, and then go to file and export. Shift, Command and Control E. Output sharpening, screen, matte paper, glossy paper, standard, low or high. You've not got much choice. There's not a fundamental flaw with this. I'm just saying I want more control. Cancel on that. So what I would do now is do my normal edits, but I won't touch the sharpening at all. And I'll leave the noise reduction as it is. Color 25, detail 50, smoothness 50. Color noise is very rare and having it on 25 hardly has an effect anyway if there's no color noise in the image. So what I would do, do my changes, leave the default sharpening, come up to photo, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop, command and control E, or open as a smart object in Photoshop, my preferred route. What about bridge? So if you're going in via bridge, double click, bring up Adobe Camera Raw, the sharpening settings will be exactly the same as the default settings in Lightroom because there's only one version of Adobe Camera Raw on your system. Open the image in Photoshop or press the Shift key, open it as a smart object or press the Alt or Option key, open it as a copy. Let's go cancel on that. Automatically, when you play with Bridge, it puts you into Photoshop. There's my smart object I brought in earlier. Double click on it. I've got Adobe Camera Raw to play with. Cancel. What is sharpening about? Well, sharpening is about luminosity. The sharpening tools in Photoshop, like Unsharp Mask, etc., they look for edges. And when they find that edge, and I mean a luminosity edge, it allows you to turn up the contrast, make the blacks blacker and the whites whiter, just like the contrast knob or dial on your television. And then you can say, well, how wide do I want this luminosity? And that's what gives the impression of sharpness. Filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, by far the sharpest tool in the box. Please use smart sharpen. Unsharp mask is okay, but for photographs, smart sharpen cannot be beaten in my personal opinion. I'm going to turn that off for the time being. So I'm going to whack the amount up to 500 and whack the radius up to 64. That's the highest it can go. And then you'll see appear in a minute the border, obviously completely over the top. Notice when you click here, that allows you to see it in the preview box. There is no sharpening there because the gray in the background, its luminosity was matching the gray in this object here. So no sharpening is taking place. It's sort of tapering off. So that's really important to understand. There's got to be an edge there in the first place for this to work. So amount is the contrast dial on your telly. So it's making the blacks blacker and the whites whiter. If I bring it down to something like 300 or 200, you can see it's turned down the contrast, so to speak. So back up to 500. If I drop the radius to something like 20, it's obviously made the edge thinner. It's as simple as that. So that's all it is. Amount is the contrast dial, radius is the width. Now all this process, if there's noise in the image, and there usually is noise in most images, it will turn up the luminance noise because luminance noise has an edge which is being detected, so it's going to make it worse. So the reduce noise slider here is very intelligent. It knows what noise is and it gets rid of the noise without touching the sharpening or the detail. Whereas with Lightroom, for instance, Adobe Camera Raw, if you move the luminance slider up, you might have to move the detail or contrast slider up because it's 
taking away from the sharpening. It's smoothing out the noise, but smoothing everything else out. That's why Smart Sharpen is so good. Back to Smart Sharpen. Remove lens blur. There's always a bit of lens blur, whether you like to think there is or not, but there's a tiny amount, and it's the concept that counts anyway. That's the best one to be on. Gaussian blur is what Unsharp Mask uses. And notice now I'm on Gaussian blur, it's very diffuse and the edges have slightly gone and it's, you know, encroaching into the other objects. It's not very good. But the very clever lens blur sticks to the edges and works very, very well. So you can see an almost an embossing effect there. Motion blur, well, if you know the angle of the motion of the object that's moving in your photograph, on naught it will just do the edges here. On 90, for example, it'll do the top parts. So back to zero, it's doing the edges there. Shadow and highlights, hardly ever use it, but we'll look into this lens blur again. We'll look into this edge here when it updates. Click down with that little square so we can see it in there. Look at that white line there. I might try and zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, move down there. If you look at that white line, when I bring the fade amount up, because I'm in the shadows here, that will get rid of that white line. A lot of flashing going on. I'm sorry about that. It's my graphics processor struggling. So you're, you're fading the amount of the sharpening. If fades on zero, it doesn't matter what tonal width and radius are on. Tonal width, how do I explain this? Back to Lightroom. Mouse over that area there. You'll see the grayness there. Underneath it says highlights. That's the highlights there. That's the shadows. That's what it's working on in this tool here. So if you up the tonal range, it's going to go into the brighter pixels on from the shadows. So you're saying, can you actually go into some of the brighter pixels as well? If you narrow it down, it's going to stay with the sort of darkest pixels, so to speak. And that's all it is. Radius is the same as the radius there. So I try and have it really high if I've got problems, as high as I can get it. You know, if you've got 64 there, putting one there is not going to make a lot of difference. So you need to sort of crank it quite high. Highlights, it's just the same in reverse, basically. So the tonal width will go into the brighter colors. Brighter colors, if you bring it down, it will just stay within the early part of the highlights. Um, the same for the tonal width there, bring it down. It'll just be for the early part of the shadows. I hope I haven't confused you with that because you'll hardly ever have to use it. So off it goes. So what's it like on a real photograph? I've got one here. It's one of my cat called Rocky. That's a 100% view. It's a huge file, 241 megabytes, and it's 7,952 pixels by 5,304. It's a great image to work on, fine hair, lots of difference between color, etc., etc. So let's turn this into a smart object. Before I go there, if you don't want to use a smart object, what you can do is this. Command or Control J to duplicate the layer, sharpen on that layer, then change the blend mode to luminosity, and I'll show you why later. But we're going down the smart object route, so I'm just gonna get rid of that layer now. Right click on the gray bit, change it to a smart object or convert to smart object. There we are, we have our smart object. So when you've got a smart object, if you put a filter on it, like a sharpen filter, it becomes a smart filter. Without a smart object, you cannot have a smart filter. Right, filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. You should always be on minimum 100% view. So when you mouse out, you've got that little square there, and I'm just going to click on his nose. Bring that over there. And also, I'm going to go Command plus or Control plus to zoom in on his whiskers here in the image. So when you've got that dialog box open, you're still allowed to zoom. I'm going to put it on default and show you the default settings. Amount 200, radius 1, reduced noise of 10. You do have noise in your image whether you like it or not, and having it on 10 is an ideal compromise if you can't see it with your naked eye. Let's crank up the radius. I've got it on 3.2. Let's show you the radius quite high. And you can see the luminous border appearing already, but it's obviously very dark there. So I'm going to bring it back down to about three. And I'm going to try and bring up the amount slightly as well. What I will point out here, if you click down and hold it down, that's before. If you let go, that's after. So it's looking a bit funky, a bit too much, actually. So I might bring it down to about 2.6. 
and bring the amount down slightly. Click in, let go, zoom in a little bit more before, after. I'm over zooming, so it's going to exaggerate everything anyway. I won't play with the noise slider just yet because that's not true noise, that's just graininess. So I might just bring it down and bring that up slightly and click in and out again. Obviously in here, if I turn the preview off, but it'll be quite slow because it's a huge file, that's before, that's after. I'm definitely introducing some noise. You can see it there. So what I might do now is bring the noise slider up as well. And I'm going to go to 20. Now look, if you can't see it with your naked eye, um, let's say on Command 1, so that's 100% view, you might argue, well, why do you need to get rid of the noise? It's just I'm really fussy, and if I can get rid of it without affecting the sharpening, I will do. So on and off. So let's zoom back in Command or Control Plus and look again. I'm looking at that noise at 200% now, and I might bring it back down again, have a look, and then bring it back up to about 15, a bit more. I think that's fine. I'm also going to bring that up slightly because I just want it a little bit sharper. 2.5 for pixels, 223%. I think that's okay. By the way, that cog, if you want to use the legacy tool, I don't recommend it, uh, you can use it, but uh, there's nothing wrong with this tool. It's very simple in my opinion. If you don't untwirl that, which you won't have to hardly at all, it's a very simple tool. I'm going to accept that. I think I've got rid of the noise. Now, if I drag over here, there's a areas where I would definitely have noise here in these blank areas here. And if I um, click down there and looked in this box here uh, and zoomed it in, uh, there's hardly any noise. Well, there's going to be noise at 600%. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to go OK on it. Command 1 for 100% view. So turn it on and off. Before, after. I think that's really good, actually. I'm quite happy with that. We need to come here, double click on that. And this is essential, in my opinion. I'm not saying there's been a color shift in this image. But what I do is I change the blend mode of the filter from normal to luminosity. So if there is any color shift, this effect is only working on the luminosity of the pixels. And with some images, that can be really important. I just do it by default. As I said, there's two ways. You could duplicate the layer, run Smart Sharpen, then change the layer blend mode to luminosity. I just prefer the Smart Sharpen route. One more time, on and off, if it was Going to print, I would definitely over sharpen because obviously dots of ink, by their nature being sprayed on a page, don't have great edges sometimes. So you might have to up the, the sharpening to make it look sharp on a piece of paper. That's it, guys. I hope you got something from this. Thank you very much.